In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May our Lord be with you. God's help with all kinds of sins. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Heal the wounds of sin, division, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You're to see for us with the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sin and bring us to our last in life. Amen. We pray. Almighty God, by your gift to your faithful, offer you right and praiseworthy service. Grant, we pray, that we may hasten without stumbling to receive the things you have promised. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I, the servant of the Lord, urge you to live in a manner worthy of the call you have received, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another through love, striving to preserve the unity of the Spirit and bond of peace, one body and one spirit, as you are also called to the one hope of your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to our song, Lord, this is the people that long to see your face. Lord, this is the people. May our Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus says to the crowds, when you see a cloud rising on the west, you say, immediately, it's going to rain, and it does. When you notice the wind blowing from the south, you say, it's going to be hot, and it is. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky, and why do you not know how to interpret the presence? It was over 50 years ago that the most important event, spiritually speaking, in our lives as Catholics happened, when in 1962, John XXIII called for the Second Vatican Council. So it was a little bit over 50 years ago. And they say it will take about 100 years until the teachings of the council 
are completely understood and filtered down to the rank and file Catholic. I mean, the most immediate things that changed were mass being celebrated in the local language and other relatively minor changes, much more important changes in how the church is run and leadership are you're beginning to see come out now as our Holy Father is you know, local, much more to local bishops making decisions instead of everything being made by him. But that's going to take another 50 years. Most of us will be dead in God before we finally begin to understand. But the Vatican Council had one very important phrase, and that is that the church has to learn to understand the signs of the times. That was one of the key, key phrases that came out of Vatican II. That the church has to understand what is going on in this world that we live in. And those of us old enough to remember, remember that the 60s were a time with an awful lot of social upheaval and unrest. Riots in the streets in Chicago and many other cities in Philadelphia, uh, New York, California, Los Angeles. Uh, women's movement, feminism growing. Those were interesting times to be alive. What are the signs of the times now? You might say, the same thing. And we've had many presidential debates before, and intense presidential elections, and so we should, because it's important. But we don't, we don't have the, we never had the divisions that we have now. The signs of the times today, as that gospel said to us, can you interpret the signs of the times? Our tension, racism, uh, division, polarization, uh, all sorts of social upheaval. And, and I like to think that somehow our church is part of the solution to the signs of the times. I'd like to think that. And I'd like to think that the Holy Father, if we lack it politically as Americans, that the Holy Father can somehow bring people together. You know, we don't love white people. We don't love black people. We love people. We don't love gay people or straight people. We love people. Every people was made by God. And all must be loved and made to feel welcome. Not just in the church, but in the world. Where there is tension, hatred, riots in the streets, something is wrong. Minimally, God is not playing a role in people's lives, which you don't need me to tell you that. So in these crazy times, let us pray that somehow our church is part of the solution. Or we are part of the problem. Let us stand, my friends, and walk for our petitions to Almighty God.
Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Pray for the May these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, become for you a pure oblation. For us, a holy outpouring of your mercy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift. Since our praise has had nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation. So the choirs of angels will praise you as we say, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partake from the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity. Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who fall asleep in the hope of the resurrection will who die in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. The mercy on us all, we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life. We praise you and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. We forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from pray for every graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the, for the kingdom, kingdom of power, and glory, and yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, my peace I give you, not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant me peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Peace to the Lord be with you always. We share some sign of Christ's peace.
by these heavenly sacraments, we may be prepared by your gift for receiving what they promise. We ask this through Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be with you. And may God bless us, our families, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our liturgy and the Lord, please glorify God.